fellow delicious people I'm here today to review Power Rangers episodes. So, we of course go into these three episodes. We do of course have a Tommy Oliver episode, but uh, normally when I would go on and just try to find just kind of random episodes, like, hey, this looks interesting. Hey, this looks like something that I can go on and and be intrigued about. Kind of uh, these episodes fall a little bit flatter than I'm used to. It had to have happened eventually where we go on and have like something that I would probably rather complain about than I would rather uh, be positive about. And that's just kind of odd. But again, running out of episodes to eventually all cover or really thinking like, yeah, let's just cover all the crossover episodes because that seems to be like key episodes, right? That seems to be the big things to cover. But there also is some stuff where certain characters either debuted or like uh, there is always to be like uh, a good story where a good ranger would turn just uh, to the dark side. So that's always really rather interesting. But so, we go into the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers episode, episode 25, or YouTube would go on and state that it's 26. And so, we have this episode to possibly be the most goofy Tommy Oliver episode I've seen. There might be some goofy things going on in Zeo or Turbo, but I think this episode is to be the most goofy Tommy Oliver episode I've seen. So, we go on to have Tommy that is training a kid named Danny, and is telling him, it's like, hey man, a body's a temple, like, you should try to go on and put the best kind of foods in it, and then, uh, Tommy comes off as a hypocrite, and then just starts chowing down on all this food, and we then realize that Tommy is to be chowing down on all this food, because he has the Ravenator monster inside of him. And the Ravenator is eating everything that Tommy's putting down. So, we have the Rangers as well as Cat uh, trying to figure out how to help Tommy. As Cat is to go on and be uh, seemingly a fairly new Ranger and is trying to... Uh, figure things out and uh, have her own battle that she needs to fight. So we go in to have, like, I think the weakest part about this episode is actually the Power Ranger part. And we kind of quickly just, when we get to the Zord time, because we don't really have, like, as much fighting as I, I would want with Power Rangers... Then we go to the Zord, it's just like, cut slice. And so like, man, really? That's it? But that's all that you guys had time for? Because we just continue to show... Show. Um, Tommy just chowing down. Uh, Tommy really just becomes the equivalent of Slimer in this episode. So he's like... <laughs> that's really just Slimer for you, really. Uh... Like, that's all, he, <laughs> that's all he likes to do all the time. So, uh, we then go on into the uh, Operation Overdrive episodes, the Once a Ranger episodes, because, of course, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers episode was the Rita Pita, bizarrely. So... We have the Operation Overdrive episodes, and this is a big, massive crossover thing that, of course, is to tie in. Instead of just one team of Rangers, we have a random bag of Rangers that are all to be brought in, which I honestly think is a way better idea than just bringing in one whole team of Rangers from some season. Like, I think that's a way of just kind of, like, selling a number of seasons to people to really try and overall kind of resell this product to people. But instead, you just have the same, like, well, hey, like, this season is really popular, so we obviously got to do something special for that popular season. 
And I'm like, that's kind of a, a dumb move because if you've gone on to like overly sell uh, like three out of 80 seasons, then you're just kind of making a massive mistake. Uh, but so we go on into these two episodes and we honestly have Thrax that I feel is an amazing character that I honestly wish that Thrax could have kind of replaced all the other uh, villains and been then, been then the main uh, villain for the rest of the season because then I would have been a lot more interested in Operation Overdrive. Honestly, these episodes are not to get me interested at all in the follow-up or the prior episodes of Operation Overdrive because they make the Operation Overdrive Power Rangers look so ridiculously weak and the cosmetics on the villains besides Thrax that is to be brought in here and the monster Thrax brings in the villains just look cosmetically just so freaking uh fugly so yeah like I think yeah like this would probably be the only season where I feel like I hated the villains uh, just by looking at them. It was just like, this looks like a booger. That It just looked like this thing should not exist. These villains should not exist. Um, I liked the Mercury Ranger. The Mercury Ranger was interesting because I like metal kind of rangers. Uh... At some point, I would love for them to just kind of bring, like, a whole metal episode uh, of all the metal rangers. Bring them back. Bring golds and silvers and, and titaniums and whatever. Just kind of like a cluster of metal rangers and kind of bring them back. The heavy metal team. Anyways. So, but we have Thrax that comes back uh, into the story. Well, comes into the story to state that he is the... Son, of course, Rita and Lord said, and somehow, like, he had been able to nix past the whole, like, uh, in space story somehow, and gone on to try to fight with uh, Sentinel Knight, and it turns out that. Uh, that Thrax ended up in a space dumpster just like his mother did and got free and stated the same lines just like his mother did. So, uh, so yeah, so we end up having Adam, we end up having, uh, Tori, uh, Xander, uh, Kira, we have Bridge, we have all these rangers that end up coming back specifically for this two-parter. And we end up having a bunch of the rangers going on and commandeering the uh, other rangers' zords and stuff. I'm like, well, why isn't it that any other time when the rangers have like 30 different zord zords at their disposal, why can't the rangers just share then? Wouldn't that make a lot of sense to have the teamed up rangers also share like zords and just start decking people? That would be pretty sweet. But no, they don't do that. Cause it's like, oh, like the rangers can't just jump into the other ranger zord. That wouldn't that would make sense. How could that work out? It's they're not compatible. Uh, whatever. Um, but yeah. So <clears throat> with that said, I hope I'm gonna be able like. Especially when we get to the Operation Overdrive things. It's really freaking complicated. There's a lot of stuff that ends up going into the, all those episodes where it's just like little bits of fights. If I forget like one little piece, like it feels like I forget the whole episode. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go on into the double five time territory because about that time. Yet again, to of course go into what is spoiler time, spoiler time. But about that time, you're spoil it. It's about that time again to spoil these episodes. So the Mighty Morphin episode was 
bad, but I would state that I laughed at it. It was so goofy that it was like, man, I'm having fun because this mo this uh this episode was goofy, uh, and like was talking about like uh dieting choices, and I'm like, whatever, um, uh, and so I just laughed at it. Uh, the Operation Overdrive episodes not exactly the worst uh crossover uh kind of thing i would state that the zeo and nin or the the zeo and the alien rangers combining together like that was probably the worst story wise uh combination and plus like the alien rangers weren't used to like their best benefit the the rangers that were actually crossing over on this episode so yeah like so I would say that like the Oper Operation Overdrive uh, was to be like a close second to that because any other crossover, I'm like, man, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. And like Operation Overdrive on the Operation Overdrive Rangers side of things and just the a normal day to day with Operation Overdrive just looks like crap uh, or is just not that good. So with that said, let's go into spoiler time spoiler time about that time yeah let's go into it so the beginning of this episode we have tommy that seems to be doing a private lesson i'm assuming because it's only him and one other kid so tommy's going on and training danny and we have aisha and we have rocky who are looking on as tommy's doing this private practice and they're talking about like how great tommy is and how, like, he's teaching this kid really well, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Are you guys falling in love with Tommy? Like, you guys do know that he's going to be falling in love with Kat in the future, and he's going to have babies with that woman, right? <laughs> like, it, it's, it's too bad. Like, you guys just couldn't have a slice of that Tommy. So, we go on, and we have Tommy, and we have Danny, who is starting to get hungry, because... Like, how about we just kind of, like, let's wrap up this session. So, Ernie all of a sudden just kind of, like, comes out of nowhere. And Tommy's like, well, hey, like, yeah, let's get some food. So, we have Tommy that goes on to state that he's like, well, hey, I'll have a pita. And, like, I'll have a smoothie. And so, when Danny comes in, he's like, well, yeah, I want a burger. I want fries. I want this milkshake. And Tommy's like, whoa, 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 like, slow your roll there, buddy. Like, where's the money that you're going to get to pay for this? But no, um, Tommy ends up saying to Danny, it's like, well, like, hey, man, your body's a temple. And, like, what you put into it is what you'll get out of it. So, like, maybe you should go on and, like, completely change your dietary choices because I'm telling you to. <laughs> and so... The kid should immediately just been like, well, I'm, I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to get what I like. Uh, I'm a growing boy. <laughs> but no, Danny goes on and states, he's like, no, like, I'll, I'll get the same thing that Tommy gets. And I'm just going to really just look at uh, Tommy just like, God, I hate you. <laughs> the whole time I'm eating this meal that I don't enjoy. <laughs> so we have... Danny and Tommy that are watching on as Bulk and Skull had come in. And honestly, this Bulk and Skull mode was actually like really funny. I really liked it. So we have Skull that goes on and orders uh, via Ernie, who I think Skull is to call for Travis and gets Ernie instead. So Skull orders the indigestion inducer... And Bulk looks at Skull and he's like, my God, man. Do you know what you're, do you know what you're doing? And Skull's like, ah, you, I, I need a big meal. I'm really hungry. So we have Tommy and Danny turn to one another. It's like, well, yeah, like they definitely uh, are having their bodies being temples, right? High five. <laughs> so we... Then turn around and have, uh, like, Rita and Zed and, like, Rita and Zed are like, oh my god, like, 
Tommy is such Mr. Perfect, goody two-shoes. We need to figure out a way to just dial him down a notch. So, we of course go on to have Fencer is like, Well, luckily I have this plan. Luckily I have this monster in place. So, we have the Ravenator that is gone and is to be just clearly this, like, mouth as a face. So, he is to go on and try and pretend uh the ravenator that he's some pickle for tommy's sandwich when it ends up coming tommy ends up downing this sandwich and now the monster is inside tommy's belly and tommy is forever hungry so and he's only hungry for junk food so we have adam cat and billy and Adam and Billy are talking to Cat. It's like, well, hey, like, what's it like to be a brand new ranger? Because we've never had that experience before. Neither one of us. <laughs> Tell us what it's like, Cat. And so Cat has to go on and just be like, well, yeah, like, this feels all so new. And, like, I, I still kind of freak out when the communicator goes off, when the, uh, when the, uh, the watch ever goes off. Yeah, uh, I have the, the green one. Uh, that's the one that I got. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, like, bizarrely, I just got one of those watches, but it was very cheap at the time. Uh, but I think it got more and more expensive as uh, the later on it went. So... We... Had... Cat that's, that's like, yeah, like, I'm just starting to get used to this, and... And Adam and Billy's like, well, like, you'll get there. You'll, you'll get there, rookie. <laughs> so they end up walking off. They have better things to do. They have more lines to deliver elsewhere. So Cat is like, oh, I'm right. So we all of a sudden have Cat, who is going in here from Reed and Zed in her, in her brain noggin because she's still evil connected somehow. She's kind of like Bluetoothing in some other device that she can still hear things. Uh, if you know what Bluetooth is. So, we have Zed and Rita who are picking up on that cat is to still be somehow connected to them and can hear their uh, their conversations. So, Rita and Zed are like, well, hey, like, let's, uh, let's welcome this, this new pink ranger and kind of give her some Tengu Warriors. So, the Tengu Warriors come, cat goes on and starts decking uh all of these tango warriors and she's like oh my god i feel great this is wonderful so we have tommy who is chowing down and so he realizes that he's going on and looking at skull who is not eating off of his tray so tommy takes skull's tray and so Bulk and Skull is like, well, hey, we're going to get out of here anyways. Because we're going to go on to the bake sale, the patrol bake sale. So the whole plan for Bulk and Skull is to try and sabotage the desserts to state that they're all like fish desserts. And trying to figure out a way to make these unappealing. So that way, if they don't sell the goods, then Bulk and Skull can eat the goods. So... We find out later that uh, Bulk and Skull had eaten every single one of these desserts, and they were like, ugh, like, I don't ever want to see another cupcake again. Lieutenant Stone comes in and is to ask Bulk and Skull, it's like, well, hey, like, where uh, are all these desserts if you hadn't sold any of them? Because Lieutenant Stone is like, well, I wanted to donate them all to the elderly. I'm like, dude, you're going to give all those people, like, a, a like diabetes or a heart attack or something. Because the elderly, like, they can't handle desserts, right? I'm sure they can be fine. Uh, maybe. Uh, so, once you get older, you can't have them sweets. So, we... Of course, have Bulk and Skull, who just empty out their wallets to give Lieutenant Stone all the, the dessert money. So he's like, ah, okay, alright, like... I knew I could trust you guys to sell all the desserts. 
or really just give me the money anyways because I wanted it. So we now that now that I've covered all that and I've almost covered the end of the episode, uh, let's get into the other stuff. So we have Tommy that goes off to continue to eat more food. So Bulk and Skull had gone to the bake sale. And so Kat is talking to Billy and Adam and stating, like, I think Rita had stated that she wants to go on and destroy Tommy from the inside out. And this is, of course, when uh, the guys get uh, an alert that they need to go on to the command center. So when Alpha and Zordon are trying to track down where the monster is, they realize that they figured out where the monster is, and it's inside Tommy's stomach. So, we have Adam that is, or we have Billy that is going on to state, it's like, well, hey, maybe we should bring him back to the command center so we can figure out a way to get this monster out of him. And Zordon is like, no. Like, we need to keep Tommy and this monster away from here, because what if the monster just goes on to like start to destroy this command center. I don't know how many times we've had Tommy coming through as the Green Ranger and destroying this command center. So I don't want to have that happen again. Because maybe they'll go on and destroy things so badly that we won't be able to correct it. Or maybe this monster has some ability to uh, put Zordon and Alpha under his control. Who knows? So... He might have that power. So they're like, okay, we have to just come up with a game plan to have Tommy, like, like figure out how to beat this. So they go on to find Tommy, and they want to separate him from this food. And so we have the rangers that go to the juice bar and the rangers are asking like well hey ernie have you seen tommy it's like you mean hurricane tommy the guy who ate everything even the the bar uh from off of juice bar so that, that would be just my joke so uh we have ernie that states that i think that tommy's heading to the bake sale because it's like well yeah that's the only thing that makes sense so we rush the rangers to go to the bake sale and we also have Tommy who's eating everything from Bulk and Skull's table. And Bulk and Skull is like, hey, buddy, you got to pay for that. And like Tommy's just throwing money at them. So we have Tommy that is starting to go through this, this table. And he's starting to pick things off. And so the Rangers come and grab him and like, okay, like come with us. So... Tommy then is to just kind of be held by the Rangers. And so we have Aisha and Rocky uh, that come up with this strategy. So Aisha gets the biggest Sunday that they can possibly find. And so Aisha just kind of puts this off to the side. So Tommy has to kind of like control himself to not want to go on and eat. And so then Tommy has the... Uh, Ravenator just kind of pop out of his mouth and now try to go on and start fighting the Rangers. So we have the Power Rangers that morph, of course, and they go on to like there are some cool things that this monster goes on and tries to do it, do it like grabs like a monster's leg and kind of like flings it, or it grabs like a Power Ranger's arm and flings it. So I thought that, that was like a cool idea, kind of really using this whole mouth thing to its real advantage. So we then get the monster that turns into this Megazord and we then have the, the Shogun Megazord after the, the, the Shogun Zords would go on to combine. So we have the Shogun Megazord that's, that blades it up, slices the monster, kills the monster. So we end up having Tommy because... We had Danny watching on as Tommy was scarfing down this food. And Danny had gotten so upset with Tommy. It's like, well, hey, like, you were just telling me that, like, a body was a temple. And now you're just a big hypocrite. 
and like you're a fraud, you're a liar. Like so, Danny left and he was upset. So when Tommy then meets up with Danny, Danny is stating that he's even wanting to quit karate because of Tommy, because of what he said. So Tommy is telling Danny, it's like, well, hey, like regardless of what you think of me, like. I just want to tell you that I think you had a lot of potential and that's always the like the salesman approach of getting somebody to continue to like uh, to get them like hey man I just wanted to continue to have you like keep doing the, these practices because you're doing really well even though you might have like two left feet on one foot uh, but so the kids like really you think that I had potential and Tommy's like yeah I definitely think you do. So, really that goes on and that covers all the bases for this episode. Uh, so, I think I'm going to go on to the uh, Power Rangers uh, Operation Overdrive, uh, Once a Ranger, episodes 20 and 21. So, we have at the beginning of this, we have uh, Camdor that is with... Uh, mirror tricks and they're at the front of this museum waiting for uh generalissimo which is to be kind of this like uh, almost like napoleon uh kind of looking uh uh monster that comes out of this museum with this jewel that is to supposed to be the corona arona uh, or Aurora. Corona Aurora. So instead, they look at this jewel. It's like, oh, this is just a common ruby. This is a gem. Like, no, 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 no. Like, this is the wrong thing. So we go on to have the Power Rangers, the, the double O Power Rangers, uh, all go on to meet up with these villains and we have of course the mercury ranger coming in with his uh his drive detector and he goes on and does this drive attack and or drive detector attack and immediately just wipes out this monster after all this kind of little ba battling and whatever uh, we have the Silver Ranger that just brings in this weapon and immediately just wipes this character out. So, we have both uh, Comdor and Miratrix that are like, hey, we're getting out of here. We just lost our monster. So, we then have the Ice Den. The Ice Den is to have Norg... And he is kind of sliding in, like, oh, very goofy kind of character. I always hate these kind of things. Uh, a goofy character that you hate? Nah, really? Yeah. I, uh, like, I hate the dumb, goofy characters that they always have in every one of these Power Rangers things. It's just, uh, it's just, it's the worst part of the show. But it's, a, it's the youngin' part of the show, but still... Anyways, so Nora goes on to state that he has a case uh, to give to Florius. And the little case ends up being this thing that Florius opens. And it's a message from Thrax to say, like, hey, how about we team up together? Like, I can go on and help you find these jewels or these gems. And, like, we can just team up. And, like, I'll go on and help you crush the Power Rangers. And so Florius is like, hmm, this sounds like a, like a good proposition. So, we have the Power Rangers that are going on to be at the front of this museum. We have all the news and everybody covering it. And we have the, the Pink Ranger, uh, Rose, who goes on and tells everybody. It's like, well, hey, guys, I'm gonna, um, we're going to give you these, this ruby back to you as like, quickly as humanly possible. And so, we have both uh, Candor and Miratrix that are also to have this uh, this little case being sent to them. And so 
they open it and they hear the message in the same message that Thrax was to give Florius. So we have Candor that tosses the case because he's just like, I'm, I don't need any help from anybody. And so immediately he gets teleported exactly where all the villains are to meet together. And so we have Candor that thinks that Florius had gone on to do this whole meeting. Florius is like, no, like I didn't, I didn't do this at all. So Florius, Candor, uh, Miratrix, the Fear Cats, and uh, Moltor are all going on and meeting with Thrax. And so they go on and they state, it's like, well, hey, like, isn't your worst enemy like the, the Sentinel Knight? And so Thrax ends up going on and stating the story. It's like, well, yeah, like me and the Sentinel Knight did go on and, and have some pretty good fights. And at some point, even the Sentinel Knight was to figure out a way to put me in a space dumpster where I somehow got out to like claim that um, after so long, I'm free and it's time for me to take over Earth. Uh, so, or conquer Earth. So, we have Thrax that is going on of like, well, hey, like, how about we have a temporary alliance between all of us and we work all this out? So, we go on to have the Power Rangers at the, uh, the Hartford Mansion, uh, like, celebrating with Spencer. Uh, just kind of having everybody like, yeah, like, this is great. Like, uh, we're really kicking butt. So on and so forth. So, we... Go on to now have uh, I'm trying to think where to where to where to place this now because I knew I was gonna mess this up immediately. We go on to of course have the Rangers uh, find out that there is a threat and they are going to have to go on and deal with it. So like, okay guys, like let's uh, let's morph it up. So they go on and they morph and then they realize that like the massive threat that they're going to have to face. Like there's chillers, there's, uh, there's lava lizards, there's, uh, Florius, there's Thrax, uh, there's fear cats, Moltor, all the stuff that I've mentioned with all the team up plus minions. So we, have the double o rangers who go on and they're throwing just a bunch of tech at uh like at uh this fight here and so we have the black ranger that ends up coming in with the uh uh, uh the hover tech cycle and immediately once he gets and flies in, or like just kind of like uh, dri drives in with this cycle, immediately he gets pancaked. Immediately he's just like, bam, you're down. Uh, we also have the Pink Ranger that comes in with the uh, trans tech armor. Freaking blasted and the armor ends up getting... Like, her to go flying and, like, yeah. So, like, that's toast. So, one of the rangers try to use against Thrax here. They get defeated so badly so that the rangers even have their morphers, like, explode. Like, all these rangers are getting overrun, they're getting overpowered, and we're having all of these villains come in and be like, yeah, like, we're taking out all these rangers, yeah, we're doing it. They don't go on and dance after they seemingly win either. So, we go on and have this big massive battle all happen, and so now the rangers don't seem to have their powers, and so... Now, of course, we go on and have the Sentinel Knight 
that is to talk to the rangers and just be like well yeah like you rangers don't have any powers anymore i think i have to go on and figure out like what i'm next to go on and do so earth still have to has defenders so we realize that the like the rangers are just kind of like uh like faded to like hey what, what what's gonna go on next what are we gonna do next so like i think we kind of really leave it off here and so we go on to the next episode so we have spencer and we have andrew telling the rangers like well hey like even without powers like you guys still have these abilities i'm like yeah like in the later seasons of power rangers they also like on top of like them being able to morph and getting into all these like ninja whatever kind of suits and whatever we also have them with special abilities and so i'm like man you're like you're already making them superheroes but then on top of that you're letting them morph on top of that <laughs> why is it that these rangers like aren't better at what they do they have so many advantages on top of like the older rangers that all they had was like kicking and punching and morphing and ninja suits and like they didn't get special abilities like all these other rangers have but they're having such a hard time for some reason i don't understand why but so we have a fear cat and camdor that goes to stonehenge and they assume it's like well if anywhere there's going to be a jewel or a gem here uh it's going to be in stonehenge so we have the rangers come driving in with all of their vehicles which that this time around i don't have the name of them and i'm not going to try to even name them off i'm just going to say it's like okay these are the uh the the vehicles that they come off of so we have all of them come flying in with these motorcycles or these vehicles and they're blasting away trying to hope that they can figure out ways to take down these monsters using their special abilities we have matt who has super strength we have will uh so matt the red ranger has super strength will has enhanced hearing and uh telescopial vision whatever that freaking means um dax who is the 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 blue ranger um he ends up having agility and enhanced jump ronnie has super speed which i think is one of the the girl rangers uh we have rose okay so ronnie's the yellow ranger and rose is uh the pink ranger uh she has invisibility and enhanced memory uh tyson has mercury uh mimicry uh mercury force field protection and mercury i think projectile where it's like he can use mercury to kind of use as like a fleeing kind of weapon where he can maybe like harden it or something and kind of have it be like a attack which he ends up using here so we have the rangers try to use their special abilities to their advantage but they still end up getting badly hurt in the whole process of trying to fight off these enemies so we then finally have some backup we have xander that goes on to manipulate uh the 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 grass of the earth to then kind of wrap around certain uh certain chillers or certain chills the the minions and so we start to see it's like oh my god the other rangers are coming so we end up having theme songs being used we have the green mystic force ranger that comes in uh we have the uh kira the dino thunder ranger uh we have bridge that ends up coming in as a red spd ranger but he wasn't red before 
if he has to go on and has some goofy justifying story that he ends up telling the rest of the group, it's like, oh yeah, like, well, Kruger got promoted because the guy that was on top of him, like, he, like, retired, and so Sky got promoted, and so I went from blue to now red, and, like, from whatever, like, future I'm from, because technically this is the past, so, like, I'm not a Red Ranger now, but I will become one, and so, okay, sure. Uh, um, supposedly for Cosmic Fury, there may be something where uh, Rangers are going to start uh, doing something with uh, SPD. It might be, like, uh, like Space Police Academy, or it could be some kind of equivalent of that, but who knows. Uh, so, we end up having all the Rangers coming in. We have Tori, uh, who is the Blue Wind Ranger, and I'm starting to feel a little gassy, you know. Uh, so, Adam ends up coming in, and he's the only one that they don't use his show's theme song for him like what like was it too much money to ask for the mighty morphin theme song could they have not gotten that song was it too much to pay for rights so we have the rangers that all come in and smoke uh camdor and uh the fear cat so they're they bail they they leave so we then go on and have the uh, the Double O Rangers, the upper, uh, Operation Overdrive. We have them meet up with Rangers and like, oh my god, like wow, like so, like uh, the Sentinel Knight had like wanted to come up with some kind of plan, so I guess you guys are it. So we go on to then have at the the Hartford Mansion, we had the Sentinel Knight going on and explaining, it's like, well, yeah, like, I re-energized all these uh, Rangers Morphers, and so now they're going to be uh, kind of uh, to be your replacements. And so we had the Rangers that are just like, oh, so they're basically, like, going to be us for a while, and we're just going to have to just sit around and do nothing. Uh, so... We go on to, of course, then have Florius with the, the Chillers. And they're wanting to go on and wreak some havoc. And so we have the new Rangers coming in. And they're kind of taking over all of the equipment that the other Rangers had. And so... They go on to take uh, the the hover tech cycle. Like Adam starts like riding in this thing, and it ends up like adjusting to morph into this chopper. And so like he's coming on on this like chopper thing. So the hover tech chopper, I guess. So they end up start using the other rangers' equipment, and it just looks and and just seems very weird. So. We have the Rangers coming in and just taking down Floris and the, the Chillers. So, we then go on to have Adam and Andrew, like, they're trying to figure out, like, what they can do to help the Rangers. They're, like, trying to fix the Morphers. And Adam's like, well, maybe I have something that can fix the Morphing Grid. Because Andrew's like, yeah, I don't know where to start. And so... Adam's like, well, I think I know somebody who's really experienced with Morphin Grid. So, we have Thrax who goes on to talk to Florius. And so, Florius is kind of just stating, it's like, well, like, like I think with these new Rangers, like, I think uh, we've kind of met our match now. And that it feels like these Rangers are just kind of popping up like a certain plant. And... Norg ends up seeing like, well, yeah, I like these plants. So Thrax is just like, well, okay then. Now to Plan B. So Thrax ends up represent or, or, or presenting uh, this monster 
called the uh, Thultorus. It's like, well, yeah, like, like Sikkim. So we come to find out that this monster within this one episode that it's in ends up getting killed, remade again, and then killed again. It's kind of just really goofy and really uh, odd. So we start to have the Power Rangers realize that uh, they're not going to be able to really go on and use their powers. So it feels that the Rangers are almost kind of tempted to just give up. That uh, the Overdrive Rangers are just like, well, hey, like, should we just kind of quit? Like, should we just go back to what we were doing originally? And so we have uh, we have Mac that's just kind of sweeping around, and he ends up talking to his dad. And so it's like, well, yeah, like, I don't know what to do. So we... We then go on and have all, uh, la, 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 la. so, um, we have Adam that is to go on to Angel Grove and bring the rest of the Rangers with him because he has something in storage. And so the Rangers are like, well, hey, like, like, what, a, what are you, uh, what do you have? Uh, like, what are you getting? And Adam is just like, like, you wouldn't understand me if I even explained it to you. So, like, let's just go. So, the Rangers go on to find out that the Chillers are there. Uh, because it seems that Xander is to have the spell uh, to be able to go on and find uh, that there's villains around. So, the Chillers come out and they start finding it. And so... We have Xander that goes on and uses his, like, uh, like his uh, plant manipula manipulation thing. Uh, his spell that he can go on and cast. So he's like, well, hey, I'm going back to my roots. <laughs> so we have Tori that is to use her, like, water manipulation. And she ends up using this, like, water attack. So... I think we also end up having Kira that at some point uses like her sonic scream and Adam just goes on and just beats the crap out of uh, the guys and he's just like, well, like, <laughs> he just beats the crap out of all the chillers and he's just like, well, like, I know that it's, uh, it's kind of old school, but like, it still works. So we have the Rangers take down this, these chillers. And so now we go to the one box that has a lightning bolt in it. So we're going to at some point like reveal what that is all going to be. So we go on have the 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 overdrive rangers that quit and so we have Ronnie that goes back to be a, a race car driver. We have Will that goes on to be this art thief that is to go uh, to get funded by all these places to steal for them to see if he can, and he does. So he gets paid for it. And then uh, we have Dax that is to be this movie star in the set, and immediately once he does this one, uh, this one thing... It seems that they're done for the day. And it seems we have Tizan who goes on to just this uh, this forest somewhere. And he walks off. So we have Mac that talks to the Sentinel Knight. And the Sentinel Knight is to mention that the only thing that could possibly beat Thrax is the Excelsior Sword. And that, of course, to be with the... Uh, this this goddess so uh this warrior goddess so mac goes on to talk to uh rose the pink ranger and is to ask her it's like well hey like 
like I think I'll I'll need to figure out where this like warrior goddess is. Like where is she exactly? So Mac figures out where this warrior goddess is. Is he sees the statue and Thrax is surely there behind him. It's like aha, like I wanted to go on and follow you, Mac, so I can uh, like get this sword for myself. And so Mac ends up kind of laughing at Thrax because it's like, well, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get this sword. And so Thrax is like, well, what do you mean? And Mac is like, well, like the goddess is to be the only one who chooses who gets this sword. And guess what? You're not going to get it. So Thrax is like, no, like I wanted to take this so that way I can destroy you and Sentinel Knight. But Thrax ends up leaving. The goddess ends up giving Mac this sword. So we have the Excelsior sword. And so we come to find out that in that whole box that Adam had got was Alpha 6. Which I guess was like the Turbo Alpha. Uh, so when eventually they they kind of change things and like they change the voice of Alpha and and whatever. So Alpha is going through the morphing grid itself and trying to fix the morphing grid. So we then go on and realize that the rangers can possibly get their morphers back uh the the double o's so we go on to have uh volturus that is to now be like large and so we have the the latest rangers going into the drive max megazord so we have the rangers that are trying to figure out the Zord. It's very awkward. It's very weird. So we all of a sudden find Mac, who now has this sword, and he slices through this uh, Volturus and kills it. And so now that Mac has this uh, this sword, he brings it back uh, to eventually have the morphers being handed off from adam to now mac because now all the rangers can now morph so it's like okay we're gonna legit have a real team up here so we go on and then realize after the the volturus is now dead we have florius who's just like well hey like i've been here before so he has been using his power uh, to make the Volturius, like, resurrect, and it is now under, uh, Gaito power. So, we now go on and have all the villains that are going on to try to make a second run at the Power Rangers, and so now we find out that all the Rangers are all going to morph simultaneously, and we have Adam that goes on and does a pretty sweet morph and we go on to have um uh interesting other morphs so uh we have all of these weapons that end up getting used here i'm going to probably uh now remember half of this stuff that probably happens as far as the war side of everything so we have both uh, Drive Vortex and Drive Slammer that is coming from both the Blue Ranger and Black Ranger to like start out these attacks. We have the Mystic Force fighters, uh, so that means that the Green Mystic Force Ranger is to have these big massive boxing gloves and he's attacking, trying to wipe out these, uh, these threats. So, we also have, bizarrely, Adam, who's wearing the Defender vest, which is to be the blue and, and red 
kind of circular vest. So he's wearing that at some point in this battle. We have, of course, the girls that are kind of mixing it up. And so we have the Yellow Ranger and then Yellow Dino Thunder that are combining together with uh, the Double O Yellow Ranger with her Drive Claws and uh, the Yellow Dino Thunder Ranger with her Batera or her Terra Grips. We have the Pink Ranger with her Drive uh, Geyser and the Ninja Storm Ranger with her Ninja Sword. And so we then go through all freaking of that against these Lava Lizards. So we go in and we come in with the Mercury Ranger who goes on with his Drive Detector again to do the same attack that we saw before. So we had Bridge go on and toss his blasters to, uh, to Mac. Mac goes on and uses the blasters as, uh, as Bridge had fallen down. So we then come back with the Red Rangers again to have Mac with his uh, Boken Bow uh, and, uh, I think, or no, wait, they switched weapons. So the SPD weapon is with the, the double O, uh, Red Ranger and the, uh, the double O weapon is with, uh, the SPD Ranger. So I think Mac has the... Uh, Detramax Striker Red. Like, it's some goofy-looking weapon thing. It's very long and unusual. I'm not quite sure what it is, because I haven't seen it that often. So, after that hit, it feels like all the villains are really starting to feel this. So, we go on and we have Mac that gives the uh, Sentinel Knight... Uh, the Excelsior Sword, and the Sentinel Knight realizes that it had gone on to upgrade him. So, the Sentinel Knight is to come on in and try and fight with Thrax, and the Sentinel Knight just kills Thrax. He destroys him. So, we then go on to have the rest of the villains that are starting to now realize, like, well, hey, like, we should definitely go on and get the heck out of here. Let's go after our jewels or our gems or whatever uh, and focus on that or who's going to get the next gem first. So all the villains end up leaving and the Power Rangers are to kind of just shake hands and high five like, hey guys, good game. So we then go on to have the Rangers that are now uh, kind of all together and forever, right? <laughs> All together forever. So we have Dax that goes on and states like, well, hey, guys, like, you know what? I didn't really like that you guys were here before, but now I don't like that you're leaving. And so we go on and state that some of the Rangers are going on and uh, kind of uh, like going to part ways. And so we have Xander that goes on and say like, hey, if you guys ever want to go to the Rock Porium, like I'll give you like a, a, a discount. Uh, we have uh, Kira says that she's coming up with another CD soon that these kids will go on and listen to. I'm not quite sure what Tori ends up saying. Uh, more likely, it's like, well, hey, like, come to my place and I'll train you or whatever. <laughs> I'll show you the, the Ninja Force ways or the Ninja Storm ways. I don't remember what she says. Uh, and then we have Adam that goes on and states that he's going to take Alpha 5 to use him at his dojo. So I'm assuming in uh, Cosmic Fury we might have Alpha uh, come back with the rest of the uh, MMPR Rangers to kind of give us like these this Alpha moment, but maybe not Zordon, but still. So 
Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of where the end, uh, the, the episode just kind of ends, uh, with the, the Rangers kind of saying their farewell, and I think it's about that time for me to just go on and say farewell also. Uh, this one was, was really hard to figure out how it was all to play out, uh, or remember, like, every certain specific kind of note and whatever, especially through the Operation Overdrive, like, I've just gotten so worn out on all these like huge massive events but i have to go on and keep on keeping on uh so with that said i'm going to go on and get out of here let me know in the comments below how you felt about these episodes uh if you liked them if you hated them uh if you're like oh no 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 like i uh like i liked this episode of of a random power ranger thing uh and then maybe at some point i might go on and review them uh, because I'm trying to just go on and, like, I still want to cover, like, certain kind of things. But I also want to branch out and try to do stuff that I haven't done before. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Bye.